of the pill mill phenomenon. Uh, but the abuse of these medications is nationwide and has increased uh, by five million people uh, of uh, non-medical users of, of pain medications over the past four years. Uh, so it is, a, it is the major uh, growing uh, drug problem in the United States in this new century. And also um, the director right now of the National Drug uh, Control and Policy uh, is a man by a man by the name of Gil uh, Kulowski, Kulikowski. And he was on the news just recently talking about the national drug strategy of the Obama administration. And their number one issue that they want to address is prescription drug uh, abuse and misuse. Um, and specifically in that interview, Florida was mentioned. He came here, as a matter of fact, he, at the Commission on Substance Abuse to ask experts here what the experience in Florida has been so he could take that back to the president and, and, and try to figure out how to address this on, on a national basis. In some states, it's not an issue because they have a prescription drug monitoring plan. So these pill mills are, can exist because somebody is watching. Uh, consequently, those people from those states are the ones who are coming here because they can get it. Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to make a statement and ask offer a challenge. Does there have been a prescription monitoring plan in Florida, in the United States, on process for over 25 years? It's just that it's injury driven. They can tell you a physician that orders every drug and pays for this information. So if you want to look for information, it's there. Who's the who's on the right, Oxycontin, or whatever. My challenge is maybe, I'm looking at this thing, and I heard what you said when we first started. I did those numbers, I knew they were close. But if 95 out of 100, your top clinics are in Florida. I started to look at Florida, it's pretty, pretty weak somewhat. And then I look at the top dispensers of pharmacies in the United States of those drugs, Oxycontin, Palm Beach goes out of business. Briar goes out of business. It's in Dade County now. One, two, three. It seems like the main Florida for is suspect here in South Florida is. Why not look at the real problem? You just can't get in a pain mill just as I want to go out and go over there tomorrow night. I can't do it. I need a license from the state. I need one from the feds. Is there a responsibility on their part to look at Florida? Where's the other 49 states? What's the problem there? Why is it South Florida? I hate to be a tourist from Alpha, but the cruise line trying to get a I just think if it goes up the, up the uh, food line, or what do you want to call it, take a look. Is there a problem with the EPA? Is there a problem with the state? If you're giving out nine, nine uh, you know, pain clinics a week, it takes up six to eight months to collect information to get one off of a week, somebody's doing a lot of work here and they're getting overwhelmed off of the fast. Is it a safety issue problem? Well, first of all, what federal license do you need to open a pain clinic? If you're a dispenser, you have well, to, that's that's a dispensing a physician, though. That doesn't have to do with, they don't license the clinics. And the, and all you need to open the clinics is a business license, as, as far as I understand right. it. But that's changing. And, uh, well, you have to register with the state. But that's not, registration doesn't mean that it's a license. I mean, it, you have to register, and they have to approve the registration. Um, they, I, I don't know that they've started inspecting yet. I think they're still promulgating what the rules are going to be for these clinics. But um, I, I think that because we have so many of them, it would appear to me that it's pretty easy. And all we need to get is a doctor who's willing to put their name on the you know, paperwork and is a dispensing physician and is, and is willing to dispense. Actually, actually, the, actually, the administrative codes that were passed by the boards, as soon as they were enacted, will address a lot of that. Because you're right, all it takes is $150 in order to, in order to get registered with the state of Florida. What was it? You said it was $999. Nine hundred ninety-eight. Nine hundred ninety-eight. Pain clinics registered in the state of Florida. Right. They're required to register by January. However, the requirements for the operation of them that that has been passed by the boards, but is, again, is still waiting enactment. Because they have to have a certain a certain amount of time for their legal challenges, will require that a single physician be the medical director or appoint a person for all those things. So now you've got somebody whose whose butt is on the line directly. They're ultimately responsible for anything that goes on that clinic. Number one, number two, it's going to require interval inspections where a certain number of charts. Specifically, they, they give a specific number of charts that will be pulled randomly and audited. So all of these things are now going to go into effect and it's going to make it tough. Until now, the weak link has been the legislation. We haven't had the rules in place. 
People could just open, you go and you get an occupational license and you open up your doors and say, I'm a pain clinic, and you hire a doctor. And if the doctor's willing to write two million, you know, two million oxycodone a year, so be it, you can do it. Not so much anymore. Once these once these rules are running, that's that that, that all is gonna go away. And, and with regards to South Florida specifically, though, I think you have to look back historically a little bit and look at the demographics of South Florida as well. And perhaps we were able to fly under the radar just a little bit because, you know, we do have a high transient population with in and out as well as we have a very high level of elderly population here. So it wasn't unusual that maybe we needed more than other areas of the country. You know, we had a higher demand. And so I think that perhaps demographically we were able to sort of slip under the radar there and then all of the other situations. Yes. How much do you think these high-profile cases with Michael Jackson, Heath Ledger, and uh, Corey Haim recently has brought to the issue, obviously nationally, and is that, you know, kind of like bringing people together, bringing lawmakers together, and kind of like, you know, enacting things that would move this in the right direction? That's a good to question. I, I give you a good answer. If it was their family,